It is time now for our Common Ground segment. Joining us tonight, California Republican Congresswoman Michelle Steele and California Democratic Congressman Jimmy Panetta. Thank you both for being here. I want to start with uh, the common issue that a lot of Republicans and Democrats are worried about, and that is China, its aggressiveness, how it's playing across the world, and what the U.S. is going to do about it. Former National Security Advisor uh, spoke on Fox this afternoon. Take a listen. China has no respect for the United States. They've had their way with us for so long. We've turned a blind eye to their theft of intellectual property. They've extinguished uh, democracy in Hong Kong. They're threatening our ally, Taiwan. I think the Chinese think they can get away with just about anything. They don't, they don't believe our red lines, and uh, they're going to move forward how they see fit. National Security Advisor O'Brien there. Uh, Congressman Panetta, do you agree with that, and what do you think Congress can do about the situation? Yeah, no, it, look, I think it's clear that the CCP kind of loathes our democracy. Uh, it can't stand our capitalism. Uh, and it basically definitely devalues uh, the human rights that we so cherish. And therefore, that's why it's important to have what we did this week, a bipartisan showing of concern about the CCP with the Select Committee on China. And so, and what you saw there is Democrats and Republicans coming to, uh, to, the, to that chamber and discussing uh, how difficult, uh, basically, we're at the position that we're in right now in confronting the CCP and their aggression abroad and the repression at home uh, of the people. And so I think that was important for the American public to not only see the bipartisanship, but hear about our concern and therefore highlight the concern that we have with the CCP. Congresswoman, you're on that select committee. Uh, you also uh, co-authored uh, some legislation about support for Taiwan. Uh, this is something that is common ground for Republicans and Democrats, like uh, you're working with Congressman Panetta. Yes, this is a bill actually we introduced together last year, and it never came to the floor. And this is very important because this is the warning to China. Don't even think about attacking Taiwan. And second thing is, anything happens, and if China attacks Taiwan, then we are ready to defend Taiwan. And third, we want all whole world knows, especially these communist countries, that we, America, we defend our allies. So this is a great, great bill. And I'm just so grateful that I'm introducing this bill with Congressman Panetta. You know, Congressman Panetta, I guess there's some some question about administration policy talking about the support of Taiwan. What the president has said publicly numerous times now that the U.S. would come to the support of Taiwan if China, China attacked. And just this week, John Kirby was asked that question about the one China policy. And here's what he said. Nothing's changed about our one China policy. We don't actively support. We don't support Taiwan uh, independence. Uh, we don't want to see this come to blows, and there's no reason for that. So I guess there are people in the U.S. and maybe people abroad wonder, where is the U.S.? Are we standing with Taiwan if they get attacked? Yeah, look, I, I think we understand our policy of strategic ambiguity, uh, no matter what the president says. I think the fact is, is that we understand that whatever the policy is, we've got to be able to support Taiwan if they were invaded. And I think that's exactly what this Taiwan Lend-Lease bill does. Uh, and I think looking back at the lessons of the Ukraine war, obviously, I think the number one lesson is the need for speed. And that's what our bill addresses. What I mean by that is, if I was China and I saw Russia's floundering going in, not being able to take Kyiv, and basically that allowed the second lesson for the Ukrainians to ensure that basically they hold out as long as they can. And once they hold out, that's when the support will come. And that's why the Taiwanese and this Taiwanese Lend-Lease Bill is so important, because it's going to reduce the red tape and it's going to increase the infrastructure to get our armaments there to support Taiwan. So, look, you can call the policy whatever you want to call it. I believe that we got to be prepared to support Taiwan if they are invaded by the CCP. Congresswoman Steele, uh, in your party, there is some growing doubt about how long this lasts with Ukraine. It it is growing. It is vocal. Um, there are people concerned that this is going to be never-ending. There are also people concerned that this is going to lead to World War III. 
How, how do you see it from your vantage point, and are those legitimate concerns being expressed? You know, when um, all these troops lined up and, you know, for Ukraine uh, borders, we knew that something's going to happen and Russia is going to attack. This actually bill is going to save money because at that point that it took forever to actually deliver all these war supplies to defend Ukraine. And even though that we have all these NATO countries that, you know, surround it, but we knew that it's going to take the way too long is the reason that we ended up spending more taxpayers' money of the United States. But Taiwan is a different deal. That's why Congressman and Congressman Panetta and I introduced this bill together, because first, that we are giving them the warning that we are ready to do it. Second, we can expedite that delivering all these war supplies so we are ready to do it. And this is really good to show. On the top of that, you know what? How long that, you know, we're going to just keep up with that uh, CCP's aggression? Because I was born in Korea, raised in Japan, and I hear that after Taiwan, then what? South Korea and Japan, you see that, you know, Korean, American, I mean, Korean government and Japanese government, they are very nervous, and we have to show that we are standing with them. And this is going to save money for the taxpayers when we can expedite and stop the war right away. Yeah, last thing, Congressman Panetta, you, you feel that, though, right, the, the pushback? And maybe it's not in your party yet, and your party is, is standing in lockstep with the president in support of Ukraine, but maybe you hear it inside, you know, your district, that when is this going to end sort of thing? At least I hear it as I travel the country. Oh, sure. Look, it's, it's okay to, to regret the war. But you cannot just erase the brutal invasion by Putin. And I think that's the position we're in. And I think, you know, obviously the support by the United States, uh, there was living proof based on President Biden's brave visit to Kiev to basically say, we're going to stand with you. We've stood with you and we're going to stand with you and run with you for as long as it takes. Now, I think the question needs to be, what is that going to be? And how long will our commitment be? Obviously, from the Democratic Party, and I think the Republicans that I work with, like Congresswoman Steele, we understand that we need to be there the whole time supporting Ukraine and, and making sure that its people continue to defend their democracy. Uh, it's not going to be easy. And I think the president's made that clear from the very beginning. But the fact is, that's exactly yeah. what we need to, do to ensure that countries maintain their democracy, their sovereignty, and defend their democracy. This is a fascinating point of history in, in foreign policy specifically, and we're getting ready to head into a presidential election. We really appreciate uh, you both coming on and finding some common ground here on Special Report. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much.